baut. Okay. Uh, right. Okay, so welcome to the uh, first uh, session of this course on uh, infinite dimensional geometry. So we are uh, talking today about calculus in locally convex spaces. Um, as we've seen last time, Banach spaces are in general not um, enough for what we want to do, uh, meaning that a lot of interesting geometries and groups and so forth cannot be modeled on Banach spaces. So we have to be, uh, or we have to def uh, define calculus on more general spaces. And the locally convex spaces will be the right um, thing uh, to, defi uh, to define our mappings of uh, differentiable uh, or, or differentiable mappings on. The question is, of course, um, why do we uh, want these locally convex spaces? I mean, what is a locally convex space? But before, before we go to differentiable mappings, um, let's perhaps try with an easier question. Uh, let's perhaps have a look at um, curves. So we can, we can take uh, maps from, say, the real line with or an interval with values in a vector space and ask ourselves, when can we differentiate these? And uh, a minimum requirement for differentiability will be that, I mean, when you think of how you would define the differential of a curve, you take um, uh, a differential quotient and take the limit of this, uh, of this quotient. So on one hand, you need limits, and then you need the vector space structure to make sense of the addition and uh, multiplication. And uh, you basically want to define what it means to take a limit in this vector space. So purely a vector space is not going to cut it. What we need is um, uh, the following uh, concept. We need a topological vector space. So basically, this is a uh, vector space together with the Hausdorff topology. In this lecture, all topological spaces and all topologies will be Hausdorff. So we're always asking this because we want to compute limits and we want to have uniqueness of, uh, I mean, if the limit exists, it should be unique. And uh, so a house, uh, house of topology on a vector space is called a vector topology if it makes the addition and the scalar multiplication continuous. And here I should say uh, on this slide and in all what's going to follow, so the reals which are uh, here on the left um, in this formula for the, for the scalar multiplication are always endowed with the usual standard topology. So the metric topology induced by the absolute value. Okay. And... Um, if we have a vector space with a, uh, with a topology making uh, additional scalar multiplication uh, continuous, then we call this um, vector space a topological vector space or TVS. And uh, we will usually suppress in the notation the topology T. So um, when I say it's a topological vector space E, then I mean, well, we have singled out some sort of, of topology. and. Um, so what's, what should be clear is every normed space is a topological vector space. This is, uh, normed spaces are what uh, I assume most have seen who are attending this course as a standard setting for uh, differentiable mappings or, I mean, perhaps you've seen mostly finite dimensional spaces. And uh, an example which we very much care about and we'll discuss a little bit later in the lecture is the uh, set of smooth mappings. So see infinity from an interval, say in this case, the closed interval from zero to one with values in the reals. And we can topologize this vector space in a canonical way uh, such that it becomes a topological vector space. However, uh, the topology will not come from a norm. So these topological vector spaces, their topology does not necessarily come from a norm. They are more general than norm spaces. Okay. However, once we have a uh, topological vector space in, in uh, place, we can define uh, what we mean uh, by a differentiable curve. So first of all, we, uh, we, we fix a topological vector space, a continuous map from a non-degenerate interval into this vector space. What I mean by non-degenerate interval is an interval which does not only consist of one point. So also in the following, whenever I will be uh, talking about an interval, uh, the assumption will be that um, the interval really cons uh, consists of more than one point. And continuous curves are called C0 curves. And um, a continuous curve is a C1 curve. If um, the, uh, the limit exists um, of this differential quotient, so uh, you have uh, the usual definition of what you, what you mean by, by the differential for a curve, say you might be familiar with in a finite dimension vector space. And uh, we want that this exists for all 
points in the interior of the of the interval. So we decidedly allow intervals which have boundary points, right? And um, the notion, I mean, what do we mean by being differentiable on such a boundary point? This means that uh, we can just extend the derivative um, gamma prime continuously and uniquely to the boundary points, right? So um, in the end, what we want uh, is that not only should this limit exist for all points in the interior, and then uh, we want to continue it onto the boundary point, but this, uh, these um, limits should give us a continuous map, which we call DDT of gamma or gamma prime. And this should be a continuous map from the interval with values in our topological vector space. And um, well, I mean, this uh, looks like a standard definition. What we can then do recursively, we can say gamma is a CK curve if uh, gamma is already a CK minus one curve and the, div uh, the K minus first uh, derivative is a C1 curve. So then we compute the Kth derivative iteratively as the derivative of the K minus first derivative and um, well, if we can do this for all natural numbers, so for every um, natural number, then we say that um, the uh, curve gamma is smooth or of class C infinity. Okay, I mean, those are all standard definitions. One uh, frequent notation, which is perhaps uh, known for people coming from physics, we also write gamma uh, or C dot uh, for uh, C prime, so in, uh, for the time derivative of such a curve. Okay, well, fair enough. So this is just a, just a uh, definition. So if we have a topological vector space, we can define what it means for a curve to be differentiable. However, uh, there's immediately one problem we'll discuss in an exercise. Um, the problem with topological vector spaces is that um, the setting is often too weak to give us meaningful information uh, using the derivative. I mean, uh, what do I mean by this? Um, recall when one defines derivatives, then uh, what one proves is if the derivative of a, say, curve vanishes everywhere, then the curve is constant. So this uh, nice little theorem, you know, from finite dimensional uh, calculus. However, it becomes false in topological vector space. Let me give you an example where you will work out the details later. So um, we look at the LP spaces. So those are equivalence classes of measurable functions, say in this case from the unit interval with values in the reals. If you don't know what a measurable function is, um, then uh, basically think Riemann integrals at this at this point. So we are we are just looking at all functions for which uh, the integral over the absolute value to the pth power is smaller than infinity. However, uh, the catch here is, so in the usual function analysis courses, usually the LP spaces are treated for p strictly larger or equal to 1. And here I want to restrict to, uh, to a p which lies between 0 and 1. And um, so this still gives, I mean, via pointwise addition of these functions, we get a topological vector space whose uh, topology is induced by this metric. So you basically define a metric by taking the difference of the in the absolute value of the integral. And um, well, this gives you a metric on on this uh, on this p space here. And uh, now the problem becomes: we can define a curve, so beta. We define this as a curve taking uh, time t to the uh, um, function which is on the interval from zero to t, uh, t excluded, uh, constantly one and outside. So if, uh, if you evaluate it on uh, something which is strictly larger than t, it's zero. So this is the, uh, the indicator function of this interval from zero to t. And uh, this, so it's easy to see that this gives you a nice integrable function um, in this uh, LP space for p between zero and one. And uh, what you are going to do in, the, in one, uh, one of the exercise sessions later on, you're going to show that this beta is an injective uh, C1 curve. So in the sense we just defined, so you can just take the limit and compute the limit in this um, LP space. And um, in addition, the derivative of the beta vanishes everywhere. 
And this is something which we haven't seen in finite dimensional calculus. So if um, the LP was a finite dimensional space, then you couldn't have this behavior that you have an injective function, which is differentiable such that uh, the differential vanishes everywhere because then the usual theorems of calculus will tell us that this is, um, that this is just uh, a constant map. However, in this case, it's even injective, so it's not, uh, it's not constant. Um, and this is basically the problem of the infinite dimensional space. So this is uh, purely caused by the infinite dimensional space being bad in some way. And we have to require something stronger than just the topological vector space to avoid this behavior in the topological vector spaces. 